to be or not to be? That is the query? Estimation? Oh, hello there. I'm just rehearsing for an upcoming show. And it's a good thing the show isn't today, because I'm still learning my lines. You see, my director explained that there are a lot of steps that happen before it's showtime. First, I learn my lines and practice, then I perform them. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the learning zone and the performance zone. Before the big show, there's a lot of learning to do. In the learning zone, your goal is to improve. You need to understand what you don't know and then focus your practice on improving. This is where you're learning new things and experimenting. Making mistakes here is expected. No one gets everything right the first time. When you're in the learning zone, it's important to get feedback to make sure what you're practicing is correct. Then it's showtime. You step in the performance zone. This is where your practice pays off and we show what you know. In the performance zone, our goal is to apply our skills. Mistakes might happen, but we try to minimize them as best we can. Here, we want to do our best. You see over there? I'm in the performance zone. I'm showing what I already know. But there was a lot of work to do before that happened. Back here, I'm in the learning zone. I have to learn my lines, practice the scenes, to be or not to be, that is the question. And improve my skills. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> and while I practiced, my director critiqued and gave me feedback. That feedback is key. To be. Yes. If we keep practicing without feedback, we may be learning the wrong things. A director, a teacher, or a mentor can help us focus on the specific skills we need to strengthen. This is called deliberate practice. Imagine if we're always being recorded. We have no opportunities to relax and try new things. And if you only do things you're already good at, you'll never learn anything new. The more time we spend in the learning zone, the more we'll improve. And the better we'll do in the performance zone. It's a lot like preparing for a school play. When the actors are up on stage, they aren't trying out this performance for the first time. They have rehearsed their parts and practiced together. Can you imagine how much time they spend in the learning zone before they perform? Well, why imagine? Let's go see. Right now, we're in the auditorium at the rehearsals for the high school play. Everybody's in the learning zone, laid back and making mistakes. Let's stop, look, and listen. What is performance like? It's a rush, and it's something that, it's like an out-of-body experience when I perform. Is the learning and rehearsal process fun? So much fun. It doesn't even feel like work for me. Literally, you just play around. It's pretty much like a playground. How long do you rehearse when you get a part to opening night? About three months, I'd say. I think that the character process actually starts before you get the role. I spend a couple hours uh, looking at clips and reading the script and, and kind of getting a sense for what that character is like. That's right, Mr. Strogan. This is the committee. How do you make your vision come alive as the director? After I watch them perform it, I'll say, okay, here's where it's muddy and here's where it's clear. So I need you to be clearer here. How are we going to get that? When he tells us something, the scene always comes together like that. Oh, Vernon, you make me scream. You just make me scream. Then show me what's in it. Why is feedback important? This one day, especially, um, a couple of my friends and I, we were practicing. They were all kind of giving me feedback. I was kind of like swinging my arms a little and like I would stand kind of like this and she stands like this. It seems you have made a very good impression on our new superintendent. So it sounds to me they were very specific in their feedback. Was, was that helpful? 
once you're actually doing the performance, it, it helps because you think about those little things while you're on stage and it just becomes like part of like the, the routine. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you on stage? Well, when we did the Miracle Worker, I was wearing a long skirt. And in the last show, my skirt fell off. <laughs> Do you recall when Katrine Katrine's skirt was falling off? I recall it very well. <laughs> it was not a comfortable moment. Did she rehearse that? No, my gosh, no. It's less trouble for you to feel sorry for her than to teach her anything better. How did you deal with it? I, I just say, OK, this is what's happening. Just got to deal with it. <sighs> How do you attribute her ability to do that? Rehearsal, for sure. You wouldn't have the brain matter to give to what am I going to do about this if you're still thinking on the fly about what's happening in the scene. So she kept that skirt on and won, but that was strictly because she was prepared. I'll begin this minute. So what do you say after the first performance? Do what you've rehearsed, do what you know, don't invent something new tonight, and that's what the rehearsal process is for. We're in performance mode now. So in the end, you worked for three months to perform three nights. Was it worth it? If we had the show last week, we probably would not have been ready at all. There were sets missing and, and pieces of character development that were missing that I needed to work on and I still need to work on. So it's definitely like a long process, but I, I love it. It's so rewarding. The moment that you walk on stage and there's people watching you and you're here and you're giving them like, like some joy and some happiness, like it makes it all worthwhile. There's a lot of work putting on a show. First you learn the part, you audition, and if you get the part, well then you gotta memorize all the lines. You have to understand your character. And then there's all the staging that goes on. And you have to interact with the other characters in the show. And then you practice and practice and practice. And the director gives you feedback and you practice some more. And you put your costume on and the lights come on and the director's shouting and the music goes on. And oh wow, is that a lot of stuff. And after all of that, they're ready to go. It's time to enter the performance zone. Well, that show was a great success. Those performances helped showcase the difference between the learning zone and the performance zone. Even if you're not on stage, the learning zone and performance zone are still important. We've all taken tests in school. Assessments are kind of like performances. You're showcasing what you know, and at the end, you get a grade on your performance. Well, imagine taking a test before you learned any of the material. That wouldn't work at all. So first, we go to school, we try things out, we make mistakes, and then we learn from them. And then once we've mastered the skill, we shift our focus from the learning zone and we take the test. The performance zone helps us identify our strengths and showcase our mastery. The learning zone helps us grow neurons and learn new skills. They're both an important part of growing, and it's vital to recognize when we should be in the learning zone and when we should be in the performance zone. Oh, speaking of the performance zone, I think it's time for my big moment. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against them in a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. 